What's a better time than now to harvest some nuclear fusion power from the start? Let's check out our solar panels. Overall, we've got 3,800 watts of solar panels on the roof of our motorhome. There are 19 panels on a slider system, and each of them are 200 watts. As you can see, those two panels are fixed, and the bottom one can be slided out, like here. I got 9 panels that are on the same charge controller. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Those 9 panels, the top two, are on the same charge controller. And then these four, one, two, three, and four, are on another smaller charge controller. And then all these panels that are sliding out, one, two, three, four, five, six, are on another charge controller. So the reason for this is those six panels, I don't always slide them out. It depends on the conditions. Maybe if it's raining or it's windy, I just do not slide it out. So they have to be on an independent line, otherwise it will interfere with other lines. And then for the rest of the panels, I just feel like it's better to have them on different lines. So the left side, driver side and passenger side won't interfere with each other because like right now you can see this some shade here from the tree on top giving out casting some shade right here and it will obviously impair the output and on the right side we have a clear sky it's harvesting its full power three lines independently going down i forgot to mention check out that wind sensor in the middle of the coach it will be useful to controlling these sliders there is an arduino read the wind speed from that sensor and then it will automatically retract the solar panels when the wind exceeds a certain amount Let's check out the rest of the system. Coming down from the roof, there is a combiner box that we see earlier on top on the other side of the roof. And then down from that combiner box is these few lines, these electrical lines. And then going all the way along the back of the fridge goes down to this place. Right there you can see it coming comes down from the floor of the fridge compartment goes down here all the way to the electrical area. And coming down from the back of the fridge is this place. These white wires, I've got uh, three of them. And then going along the ceiling here goes to that side. Over there we'll meet my solar disconnect switch. Right there. On the other side of the coach, right here, this is a solar disconnect. I've got three lines coming in, uh, controlling left to right and um, the slider part here. And then going out from the solar disconnect, it goes into three different solar charge controllers, as I told you earlier. This one is for the slider part, uh, sliding out six panels. This one is for the smaller four panels that's on the passenger side. And this is the main solar charge controller that's controlling the nine panels in driver side and in the middle part hey guys making this video costed me this room make sure you like and subscribe see what it's like now the gimbal is dead and the frame is cracked i hit the tree on top of my airstream just dropped on the roof of my airstream anyway uh, lessons learned let's keep on going Let's check out the output here. So right now we are having 2,100 watts of solar coming from the panels. Now obviously we see earlier it has some shading so it will cut down that a little bit and today is quite hot. It probably will drop the output a little bit down. And then we are using the AC right now obviously outputting some power. <laughs> Before you go, I'd like to share with you the yield of a typical day. So ignore the consumption and the front grid, that was a really hot day. But uh, the solar we got on a typical sunny day is about 15 kilowatt hours. And thank you for watching, I will see you in the next one, bye.